what you just mentioned. Yes. Right. But what, what you don't realize when you first start reading it is, and she makes the statement, she tells you the truth, mm -hmm. that it's from the old leases. Mm -hmm. However, as soon as I contacted the insurance company, the insurance company knew right away what I was talking about. And said, mm -hmm. no, you're talking about leases up in the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different deal today, and you have to write in your own, just like you did, mm -hmm. just like you done with the uh, get oil drilling. You, you write in your own protection, mm -hmm. and they do go along with it. Mm -hmm. I said, you're not dealing with, uh, you know, a flat, no, this is, this is the, the agenda, and that's the way we're going to go. Not well, they like tried that. to, not like to tell you that, that, but yeah. It's it, it, not that way anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Okay. <clears throat> the, uh, Do you want a copy of this too? Um, so, if we don't have a meeting tonight, are you, when are you going to schedule the next one? Well, I think we need to just work with Ed on getting some members here. Uh -huh. If you have one, if you have three people and you have one person not show up, no, it's it, not. Yeah, but you know, it's, uh, well, I don't have to tell you, it's a pretty daunting task and most people who have commitments are not going to want to take right. on, you know, so you're looking probably to people who are retired or to who have a kind of business that will allow them a lot of free time yeah. because I certainly wouldn't want to do it if I was running, you know, a full-time business. Well, the thing too is a you lot know, of the retired you know, folks are not here right now. four o'clock this morning and I'm working. Uh, this will be done a little that. early tonight and I still need to do it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so I, I don't know. But I'm sure there are people out there that, you know. Yeah. <coughs> some of the uh, some of the statements that were in. I'll make a copy of this. Too. Thank you. So quality of life and environmental factors, and municipal factors. This copy is not made for short people. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not for short people. People, I mean, what uh, what are you thinking? Uh, are you ready to summarize economics or set it aside for now and go on to something else or finish economics? I think, I mean, we have a lot of information now. We should probably try to summarize economics and then move on to the next. Could I ask, could I ask you something else? Um, I think earlier on I had uh, suggested uh, trying to get... Um, Trying to get the uh, the Sullivan County Department of uh, uh, Planning to do a study because I, I think personally, as someone who's worked in this area, I think this would be a a wonderful opportunity for a case study that would answer a lot of questions for you know a lot of towns like this one, mm -hmm. um, and and you know what you're talking about is basically collecting as much data as possible, and you can only do so much of it, I know, um, on existing jobs, uh, the current economic base. What jobs do we have in what sectors? How many jobs are there in agriculture? How many jobs are there in second homeowner goods and services? How many jobs are there 
in tourism, recreation, the I arts. I got those numbers on the tour leisure and hospitality for 2012. Yeah. I was able to get those numbers. Good. I think okay. they have most of those numbers by okay. category. Okay, and then you want the income that's generated, and mo most importantly, the time frame. How do you project this over the future? Is this just going to go, you know, in a downward spiral or an upward spiral? Right. And then do the same thing for uh, the jobs that would be generated if the gas industry came in here. What kinds of jobs would they be? Who would have them? What kind of income? And then over time, uh, ideally, you would want to, uh, you know, put one column and the next column, and then you could have a much better idea of the pros and, and cons. Uh, now, this, you know, this would probably mean you know, hiring professional people to do this. So I, I had suggested, uh, you know, that maybe we could look for some grant money to do this. And I'd certainly be willing to work with you on that if you're interested, uh, you know. So, I mean, it's, I think the whole economic area is a very keen one. And it's also one that's difficult to, you know, to quantify because it's hard to get all this data. I think it would be good, though, as a county project, because I don't think you can do it perfectly. Yeah, I, I, you know, absolutely. The, the, the figures are all yeah. on the county. They're yeah. not yeah. broken down by the yeah. town, a lot of them. Well, you have to do an approximation. You have yeah. to, you know. Uh, and then there's the added factor that there's a new commissioner coming in, right? And well, we don't know who that is. Do they yeah, know who that is? I don't know. And, and, they, and, and so we'd have to work with a whole different, you know, mind right. frame. And right, right. I, I, but... Again, if, if, if something that you want to pursue, I'd be certainly willing to help out on that, you know. Well, I can mention that I have a meeting with some of those people on Wednesday, you know, maybe. If it's such an important issue, I mean, they, yeah. you know, they should be interested in it, you know. <laughs> I know when Dr. Pammer was there, he was going that direction and then he left. But there was talk of that same thing that you're talking about. Hmm. And then when the police lit came, they never really talked about it again. Hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I looked at their, their study on on second homeowners. It was a good study, but it's not exactly the kind of thing that would answer our questions. It was more like where do people shop and you know, and, and uh, they, they like to uh, buy properties along major highways and so forth, you know, but that's... Yeah. And that's funny because, you know, I'm, I'm the new guy here, even Isaac's you been just taken paper from here last, but I think, you, didn't you come that, here as a kid? That's the paper you just mm -hmm. uh, taken. So, and, yeah. and um, when I moved here, uh, it, was, it was important, I, I'm on State Route 52. And I wanted to be on a, uh, that I knew I would get cable and internet, high speed internet, mm -hmm. and all that was very important. As much as I wanted to be up here, it was important not to, I'd love to be on Kratz Road or something, but you know, I needed to make sure I had dependable electricity. And even when, you know, Hortonville's out for a couple of days, I'm right on 52, so you know, if four hours at most, usually I'm back up. We, we don't really live in Hortonville. Okay, well, down, down here, because yeah. Roy does up there. <laughs> well, I know they do up in the Beechwoods, but in, the, okay, if, so in here, in even Sandy, we never lost it. Um, I think, what was the hurricane before Sandy, Irene? I think we lost it for like an hour or two. Yeah, two okay. hours, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're right, well, the, the firehouse. You're on the same street yes. as the firehouse. Well, and I we actually get, think we're on the... We get power from two sides of town here. So, so if half the town is out, the other half generally has power. You know, so we're not out very long. Once in a while, though, the, the worst spot is right up here between here and North Branch. They got one little section, quarter mile section of road there, where the trees just... Yeah, it's the trees. Well, they just seem to want to fall on that line for some reason. But, uh, I don't know, it, whenever there's a problem, that you can almost bet that's where it is. We used to lose cable and phone and everything a lot, but we really, we haven't in a long time. Well, they moved some of it to the opposite side of the road up there. Maybe that's, yeah, because we used to lose it when we were, three, four years ago, it seemed like 
it would all go out, you know, because we have everything on the same line, and mm -hmm. now it doesn't seem like it happens very often. Ice storms are the worst. Yeah. When the trees come down on the wires. Uh, I was out for four or five days, I don't know, years and years ago, and, and a big tree came down over my driveway, so I couldn't get out. I was absolutely, and there was snow everywhere, so I couldn't drive around it. I was stuck without power for, I think it was almost a week. Uh, and luckily, you know, I had a wood burning stove, so I was okay, you know. <laughs> and in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden everything lit up and this crew came in from Syracuse or somewhere with chainsaws. And, you know, I was <laughs> it was quite an experience. <laughs> Okay, so I guess we'll talk to Ed and see what we can get going here. Uh -huh. with some more numbers. Karen, I got a question to answer about this, what you just got here. Now, this lady sent this back to you. Uh -huh. this, her numbers are Jan January 2012, would be 2,100 people employed. Now, her statement says those jobs in Sullivan County that are categorized as leisure, that's the total for the whole county? The whole county. 2,100 in January, mm -hmm. 2,300 in April, and 4,000, which would be June, July, and August, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that and quarter. And then back to 2,500 in October. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a difference of 15 to 1,800 people here just in those three months. Yeah. Is that one particular industry? This is all, That's these all are the jobs. Three industries as we're talking about. Now here, well, go ahead, read the question. It's uh, ask. the jobs that are characterized under leisure and hospitality for 2012 by quarter. Mm -hmm. This is from the Department of Planning. Mm -hmm. January 2012, 2100. April 2012, 2300. Mm -hmm. July 2012, 4000. Mm -hmm. October 2012, 2,500. Hmm. So, so there's 15, 17, 1,800 people for the other 10 months of the year, nine months of the year. Mm -hmm. That's not major, working. Yeah, it's seasonal. Very. Absolutely seasonal. Well, very full on that. Yeah. And that's not as bad as it used to be. Because it used to be when the tourism was really tourism up here. You couldn't fight your way through Lake Huntington. You couldn't fight your way through the beach woods half the time. So you know. Much bigger spike in the summer. Much, much bigger ground. Much in the bigger. Fall. Tourism, as far as I'm concerned, from what I've seen in my own lifetime, from what I've seen growing up here as a young man to today, there's none yeah. on this side of the county. Now Monticello and Fallsburg seem to still have still have a lot of people for some reason. You know, but as far as what's in this side of the county, what about the Villa Roma? The only the Villa Roma has they were always here, mm. but at the same they time the Villa Roma there. was up there, there was like four or five other boarding houses up there. Yeah, oh, I know. I know. You know, yeah. so you had you know not only the people from the board uh, the villa, which was considerably smaller then than what it is now, much bigger now, you know, well, ten times bigger, <coughs> more than that with a golf course and everything else. So we do have a lot of people coming in just for just for that. And it's a, been the biggest plus for the county. Well, the county the is the exception. They're the only yeah. ones that manage They are the survive. only ones yeah. that manage to make it, yeah. right? Yeah. He's doing a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. But uh, compared to what we saw, it, it's almost identical to the farming. I mean, every, every place you looked, there was a farm, 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 farm all the way up the road. Yeah. Now, there's 12 in the whole town of Delaware. There's 12 farmers. Yeah, I was going to say, is there an agricultural column? I didn't get the agricultural numbers. I can do that if you... The agricultural numbers, I'm not sure about, but I can. I counted up the farmers myself <laughs> you know, to find out just how many are here now. Okay. In the town of Delaware. Town of Delaware. Yeah. 12, 12 farmers and... or 12 farms. 12 Dairy farms, farms, productive farms yeah. that are working, making their living up. And they, each one probably has what, three or four people, or? They're all, they're no, all you're, talking, run. Yeah, these, you're talking about dairy farms. Single people. Dairy, dairy uh, farms and beef farms. Uh, okay. So there'd be 13 in the town yeah. of Delaware with yeah. beef <clears throat> that, that I know of. 
But do you know how many actual <coughs> people working? Uh, are there any associated workers or? Uh, very, very usually few. Usually family. Family, family. Yeah. family oriented. Because then that goes with what I saw in that old census, uh, I think, census from either 2000 or maybe it was the 2010. And it said for the town of Delaware, there was only 12, I think 12, 10 or 12 people that uh, who were occupied in agriculture. Yeah. And that just surprised me. I thought there would have to be a, at least a few more than that. So there, it, but to your knowledge, there's in the town of Delaware, 12 actual working firms. Dairy. Dairy Give farms. me a minute and I can tell you who they are. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know every half of them too. Yeah. Well, I, but I think that would be useful information. Yeah. Yeah, but then yeah. there is, there is a, another sector of, of agriculture that's emerging. You have uh, a pack of farms. Yeah, the, the, um, you know, like the Gorzinski type of people. They're right. not in our town. But Vegetable farmers. Yeah, and stuff like uh, that. That you know, a community supported here. agriculture. These are kind of oddball people that just barely survive, you know, they're not, they're, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest, it's, you know, they're not, they're not big commercial outfits, you know, I mean, they're not, yeah. I, I would, um, I, I, maybe, on his maybe scale, maybe on that Martin scale, might be a little bit better. Okay, oddball. okay, <laughs> okay, but uh, on his scale, he's actually doing very well. At yeah, you. well, my neighbor, for example, whom I lease land to, uh, has uh, goats and sheep now. It's it's a farm in quotes because he does a lot of other stuff. He doesn't. That's not not his main business, but you know it's there and and it generates some I income not just for him but he he does hire people. Now they're not his employees. I mean, but he'll you know hire people to come do you know uh, work, you know cut down and get some hay or whatever it is. Uh, you know, so so he has. Uh, I would say probably. Four employees uh, part time over the course of a year. It's not a regular thing, but I, th I suspect there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Um, there's a lot more horse farms, like not in the town of Delaware specifically, but just in the area. Because as a kid, I don't remember a lot of horse farms. People had horses, but now there's a lot of working horse farms. Is, is Bobby? Up the road for me is a. Um, is a greenhouse operator. She does quite a bit of work up there. She yeah. sells uh, to all the uh, local distributors. The uh, uh, Le Petit Jardin. Yeah, Marty, yeah, Marty. yeah. She has a pretty. She sells her stuff to Agway. Yeah. The business association. That's where we get our hanging baskets. So I, from. I, that's probably not reflected in. in she does Christmas trees you know? too. And, and that's. They a, did, I think. A, I don't know. This year, I didn't really see any activity up on the hill. Well, we went there like two years ago, and there was a lot of trees there, but they said they weren't doing okay. it. So maybe yeah, they sell them wholesale, since though. Them. Maybe it's possible they sell them wholesale. They don't have people mm -hmm. go that up there. That would be a good idea, though, to have an inventory of in the town of Delaware, knowing that 12 dairy farmers that Earl knows, to see how many alpaca farms, horse farms, vegetable farms like Bonnie Cunningham's and you know, uh, to get a, a clear idea of uh, really what what is agriculture in this in this area. But you you were going to read off the names of the well, dairy farmers. The dairy farmers. I got all twelve of them here. All right. Now did did not take into whether alpaca was in. You know, they're not in this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's what two I know. Two big ones. Two, big, two that. See, in order to qualify for being an agriculture or dairy, you've got to make X amount of yes. your income 10, from agriculture in order, in order to qualify. Years, yeah. huh? You have to make $10,000 over two years for the ag exemption. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. $10,000 over two years. Boy, that doesn't seem like very much. I know it doesn't. <laughs> no, but, but I well, think that's, it, I'm almost positive that's what it is. All right, for the for your talk for the farm exemption. For just the tax exemption. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. So there would be more if you figured alpaca. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know of anyone that uh, in the town of Delaware. I don't know myself any that would be in vegetable farming and stuff. Well, like there's the, the, the petit jardin, which is 
It's not <laughs> technically vegetable, it's a seedling. It's a greenhouse operation. Yeah, she's she's a pretty big operation. Yeah, yeah no, she does. And her stuff is top quality, huh? Yeah, it's it really is. good stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. She sells a lot to Agway. A lot of the stuff at Agway is from her. So now, to my knowledge, both alpaca uh, farms yeah. are singly run by one person. Yeah. Well, Two down by, by what's your name? Jim. Janet and Robin Bruce. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know of him hiring anybody that I know of. I think he has somebody who works there during yeah. the week. Though, I, think, right? I, I think they've got to yeah. know somebody who works part time for him. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're, you're all right, even if you doubled the number, even if they all hired a hired man, yeah, you know, you're still, still only talk twenty four people. Yeah. yeah. So, so all of the twenty four, you'd be talking twenty six. Uh, can, can you list them? Yeah, you got Dave, Dave, and Brandon Peters. That's that's one farm. Mike yeah. Hankey, Tonjes, Tim Tonjes, uh, Hermie Herbert, Bobby Glazel. Herman, Chris Herman, Bob Kays, Pete Deal, Jack Deal, uh, Ross Wall, and I'm not sure if Houston is in the town of Delaware or not. I give him credit for being in the town of Delaware, and Al Tony. Al is yeah. in the town of Delaware? Yeah. What about Keegan up here? Huh? What about Keegan up on 164? But there's no production there. Oh, it's. He's, he's retired. Oh. He only, unless he's getting ten thousand dollars out of them sheep, I don't know. Oh. You know or selling his hay so or, or whatever have you. That was selling his hay that he would get it in return. No, no as far as one of my neighbors, uh, Johnny Gempler, who who has a, uh, he raises white uh, Gempler, white. Gempler, uh, Gempler, yeah. Right. Um, he's not a dairy farm, but uh, he doesn't hire anybody. But well, no, he does actually. He does. Couple people that do work for him. Mm -hmm. Is uh, Longs not a, a active farm anymore? He's not actually sold all his cows. Now there's another one that is he, he has to be getting income from something, so he would be selling this hay. I would imagine. I'm, I'm not telling you what his business because I don't know. Definitely but the property is there. I see him along but the he road. sold his cows. Like that's all I can tell you. Some of them have beef cattle now too. Yeah. What, what about? Um, oh, right. so dairy. Um, uh, the beef now. Oh my goodness. Um, Fulton. He, he's he not, sold all his cows. He doesn't. He has beef cattle, doesn't he? I don't know. Yeah, he, I see them. He's right next to me. He has oh, yeah. beef cattle. But most of his business, you're right, he does the drilling. Right. Oh. Farms, like right on the now, in order for them to maintain their, their farm exemption, yeah. is like she says, if it's $10,000 in two years, which is not much, they can make that on hay and what have you that way. Mm -hmm. when, if they were to lease to a drilling outfit, they don't lose their, they do lose their farm exemption on the pad itself. Just so it that. becomes a plus for the town and for them. They maintain their farm exemption on the rest of the property. Right. However, the road going into and the pad gets taxed commercially. Yeah. Now, there again, if you fill if you when you sign your lease, that has you you should automatically sign, have it filled into the contract mm -hmm. that that plus or that added tax that you're going to receive, you're going to be taxed on that commercially. They have to make the difference in the payment. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. In other words, you're going to get your the farmer is going to get taxed. He's going to lose the farm exemption on that pad and the road into it. Yeah. But if he writes it into the lease. It's a it's a plus for both. It's a plus for the town, plus for him. You don't lose. Yeah. But so, if he, but so if lease he makes the driller pay for the that exactly tax. right. Yeah. But there again, you have to write it in yourself. You have to do it just like Tom just said. Yeah. You have to pay attention to what you're doing yourself and, and be up on what's you know what you're signing and what you're agreeing to. How does the forestry exception work? That works. It's a uh, yeah. that's, that's nearly a fifty percent 
really uh, reduct 40, 40 to 50 percent, but it has, has nothing to do with it so far that I haven't questioned anything as far as the gas drilling versus the farm. Because uh, logging and, and the forestry are much different than agriculture. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you don't get anything out of logging until you harvest it 20 years from now. See, so it got a whole different set of rules. And I'm tell you the truth, I'm not up 100% on them myself. Yeah. Um, it's a 10, 10 year commitment on that. Yeah. Otherwise, you get penalized in your tax. Yeah. And there's no, there's no income evaluation as to whether you're making your income off of that property or not. But you do have to have 50 acres in order to even qualify. Right. Yeah. And you have to file a, a plan. File and so an forth. exemption every yeah. year, right. And a commitment every year. Can't the landowner, they they get the exemption, but they have somebody come in to farm the, the trees? No. When you, something like that where if, you have, if you have a tree exemption, you have to go through a forester. And the forester will write you up a program. And the, the regional uh, region three director will come and, sh and go over us. You send all your paperwork down to him, along with your forester's plan, and he'll give you a 15 or a 20 year plan. And then every five years, that has to be updated at your expense, whether you cut any logs or whether you didn't. You have to have to keep that plan in effect. In effect. And then each year you have to send in your your plan as to what, well, maybe three years ago he planned that you were going to be harvesting something in three years, and then again in eight years or 12, or usually a five-year increment. Yeah. And uh, you have to keep uh, – so I can give you the address, but I'm trying to think of their name. Region 3, yeah. Region 3 uh, Forester, you have to send that all in to them. Yeah. And in New Falls. Each year. Yeah. Each year you make a commitment paper, paper, and that is good for 10 more years. And then if you do that, you get a tax exemption on, on your property, right? You qualify for it, but if, if you don't go by your plan, yeah. Well, then you broke the qualifications, and you know you got to have it posted. You got to have it designated, and everything else. So there's there's pros and cons to it. Thank you. Uh, we got on the farm. The amazing part. The amazing part of the farming and the industry. This is something you're not going to hardly believe. What's that? Of all the farmers that were around here years ago, <laughs> every place you look at the farm, these guys in the county right now are putting up just as much milk as they were in the 50s. Say that again, did you? They're putting out the same amount of milk no kidding. Really? as they were in the 50s. Even with all the improved uh, technology and all that? Uh, okay. With that many less. Yeah. You know, I mean, every place you looked, there was a farm. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, and the, the total amount of farmers yeah. that have dropped the off yeah. because they couldn't afford to keep their property yeah. and they sold it, retired, whatever, and they ended up selling their property for real estate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With that many less farmers, we're still sending out the same amount. Yeah. Okay, that's, yes. I, I yeah, no, still I producing. That you so each of the existing farmers have boosted their production yes. way, way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of instead of it being the 15, 18, 20 cow dairy, no, it's, now that now that it's a small dairy, 60 cows, 65 cows. It's, it's really quite much amazing. Bigger. They have it computerized with each individual cow that gets a certain regimen of feed, and they they can figure out if they add this kind of feed, how many more gallons of milk, and so forth. It's really quite. Uh, it's it's very sophisticated. Some, some of that has been around a long time that we're just really catching up on. Yeah. My dad, when, when he was in school, dad, 90, 96 yeah. years old now, 
Mm -hmm. They had to take agriculture in school. They knew all that. They were in school. But it went by the wayside, some of it. The farmers know it. I mean, they know it inside and out. They know where to, you know, what they do to what crops and stuff to, to be and what to mix together and make milk. You know, it's just, it's common knowledge to them where you and I say, oh, yeah. So in the old days, the one typical farm would be only 12 cows or something like that? No, I wouldn't. I'd run anywhere from 15, 18 cows to, to 32, 33. 33 cows was a pretty good size farm. Yeah. And then it just started to get bigger and bigger. And those that were here all you know, smaller guys just yeah. made out. Well, they, they found out, but you know, we're like dealing with older people, and then they retired. And, yeah. You know, just said, well, that's it. So well, it used to be all done by hand, and you know, <laughs> and that would take time, you know. <laughs> 25, 26 cows was a fair sized dairy. <laughs> you guys are <laughs> well, we'll, huh? we'll aim for two weeks and we'll see. I'll let Brad know. I know he emails everybody else if we're not going to be here or what this Actually, is. I won't. In two weeks, if I was well, I'm going to be up changing my mom's clock for daylight savings time. Okay. It's a stupid excuse, but I want to go see her. My husband just died a month ago, so it's uh, my excuse to go up in a couple months. I might not be here, but I can certainly announce okay. it. Um, we can't have Hawks back already. March the tenth. No, that's early. March tenth. March tenth. A couple weeks now.